The news at five begins right now with breaking news from Manassas Park, Virginia. In the past two hours, we learned that Naresh Bhatt, the husband of Mamta Kafobat, has been booked into the Prince William County Adult Center on a charge of concealment of a body. WUSA 9 was first to report on air and online that Bot was taken into custody. This is some video of him being led out of the couple's home in handcuffs. And this is just before 11 this morning. Less than 24 hours ago, police confirmed that Naresh Bot was a person of interest in his wife's disappearance. A search warrant was executed at their home last night. Mom to Bot has been missing for nearly a month. Her friends tell us they think something bad may have happened to her. Today's events likely doing little to ease those concerns. Thank you so much for being with us at five. I'm Simone D'Alba. Yeah, this has been a very long saga. I'm Leslie Foster. Mom to Bot's disappearance has captured the attention of the Manassas Park community. And the question is, how did we get to this point? Now, Mamta was last seen at work July 27th. She missed work on August 1st. And the next day, police performed a welfare check. Yeah, but it was three days later on August 5th when Mamta's husband reported her missing. And then on August 8th, Manassas Park Police started distributing missing person flyers. We've got live team coverage of today's developments. Our Matthew Torres has new reaction to Mamta's husband being charged. But we begin with Rafael Sanchez Cruz. He was the first reporter to cover this story, and he has more from outside the couple's home in Manassas Park. Rafa? Simone Leslie Naresh Baj is being held uh, without bond in a Prince William County jail. He's facing a single count of concealing a dead body. Now, still so many questions regarding this case because police still have not told us what evidence led to these charges, which, which seems to be a common thread throughout this investigation. 22 days after police say mom to bot went missing, her husband at Bot was handcuffed and taken by police from his home. What charges will he be facing? Manassas Park Police Chief Mario Lugo refusing to answer any questions. Prince William County Commonwealth's attorney Amy Ashworth telling reporters this. Do we know where Mamta is? We are. This is an ongoing investigation. Is she alive? Is she alive or dead? We don't know. We don't know. But we are working this investigation. We're working carefully. And there's just a lot of things moving very quickly right now. This scene playing out just hours after Manassas Park Police Chief Mario Lugo Senares was no longer cooperating with investigators. Do you have a person of interest, Chief? He, he is a person of interest. The husband? Yes. The husband. Yes. Husband's yes. person of interest. He's been a point of interest, and everybody knows that. The lack of information from officials and from Naresh has fueled anger and speculation. No, I don't want to talk to the media. Like, you know, I don't want to be the bad person like you know hey why you talk to the I don't media I don't person I don't think it'd be I don't think it would be bad just you, to say you don't think but like you know you don't know but but the message is you want yeah. them that if you see her if they you may see them either like okay it's up to yeah. you this was on August 12th outside the Manassas Park police station Nadesh refused to discuss his wife's disappearance or why it took him five days to report her missing two days later he told our Katie Lesso this you know it was like normal day like other regular days just, you know, like, uh, you know, we were taking care of our babies. It was, like, very normal. Did you, did she say anything about leaving? No. no. Nadesh did say that Mamta had left for extended periods of time at least three times prior. Now, Bob will be arraigned tomorrow in a Prince William County court. And I want to add something else. In just the last couple of minutes, I spoke to the tenants that live in the bot home. They live downstairs. They were telling me that they're completely distraught. You know, the mother that lives there just wouldn't stop crying because she was just thinking of their one-year-old daughter as they're dealing through this whole situation. They tell me they, f they found out about Mamta uh, being missing way after we even reported it. And it wasn't until somebody, you know, saw those signs that went up in the neighborhood that they thought something was wrong, but they never suspected that it would end the way it did today with that arrest. And obviously we still have so much more to know about this case. Live in Manassas Park, back to you. All right, a one-year-old baby girl whose life has just been completely upended, Rafa. Yeah. And you. that interview that Rafa did back on August 12th, that was telling as well. Certainly. So all these things coming together, we're continuing to follow it all. Our team coverage continues with Matthew Torres. He is live outside the police department where mom to supporters are gathering once again. Yeah, so Matthew, I guess the question is how are they reacting to this news that mom to husband is facing charges tonight? 
Leslie, they've been consistent out here, coming here to demand for answers from Manassas Park Police. They're back here again. Um, really, they say they're not surprised, and we're hearing from a lot more people now that he's been charged that they were suspicious of him from the very beginning. So to them, obviously, this is sad, and knowing that he's been charged with concealing of a body, it just is a grim reminder to them. They're now wondering where in the world is Mamta? What happened to her? What happened to her? her body, if anything. And so that's really the questions that they've been bringing up. And in the last hour, we showed you how the community went inside the police department here to speak with the chief and other council members. That meeting was closed off to the press. However, though, I spoke to one community advocate, an attorney who's helping Mamta's family. Uh, she says that the chief announced how they have honed in on an area that they believe this is where the crime happened, but he wouldn't expand on that information. But this is what else he, uh, she said, he said to them. Not a person of interest, but he's been already charged. And they have already identified the area where, you know, crime has happened. They didn't say if they find the body or not. They found that they have enough information to believe that might be it, but they didn't go into the detail of where a house about that. The area you're talking about, the house? They didn't specify it. They said that, you know, whenever even the people from the community ask if we can, even she can, she was also there, maybe both of us can say, they, they asked if the people of the community can go and do the search. They said that they have already identified the area and, you know, if need be, they'll notify it. But they didn't go into the detail of whether it was the house or not. All right, so what they're trying to focus now on is the future of the little girl who just turned one years old on Tuesday. This is video as we watched uh, social services taking her away, covered in that orange blanket. We know tonight she is still in the custody of social services and Manassas Park Police, but no doubt community members are trying to figure out ways to get her out of that custody and maybe into someone else's home like a friend of Mamta's. But you heard how there were limited details that the chief announced police here, excuse me, the community still wanting to learn more information. And the fact that uh, cameras were not allowed inside the meeting today, I did approach a council member who was inside at the time to really get his thoughts on that, especially at a time when the community is just wanting more answers. Should the cameras have been allowed? At all? I think what they want to do to give some peace to the community itself first and hear them first. I think you will um, provide a, an additional Q&A and stuff like that. So we want transparency on every part, especially when someone's missing. You want to be able to get as much information out so everybody can hear and come, you know, get someone back home. All right, so again, uh, another gathering happening here outside of the police department. Uh, not quite sure what they have planned next, but we know at least uh, potentially another search might be happening this weekend. That was planned last night, but that could have changed, especially with the developments that we saw today, guys. Such a sad, sad saga. And that, that walkout where you see the officer holding Monta's baby and the realization that, that that child right now, at least for now, has no mom or dad right now present. And, and just all of this traumatic situation unfolding out there. Yeah. Matthew, thank you. We will, of course, continue to stay on top of all of the breaking developments as the search for Monta Kaffel Bot continues. For updates on the go, download the WUSA 9 app on your phone and turn on your push notifications. You can also watch us anytime for free on WUSA 9 Plus.